Good morning, everyone. I sincerely apologize for being two minutes late to our 10 a.m. Facebook Live. Uh, it looks like Facebook went ahead and updated on me, so I was scrambling to try and figure out uh, how to go ahead and get started, but I think we are uh, moving and grooving, so uh, I'll wait to some for some folks to join. Uh, so while we wait for some folks to hop on, I would love to see who is tuning in with us today. So please go ahead and tell us your name, where you're tuning in from, and would love to hear uh, your favorite color that can be found in nature. Uh, so Lori, this is for daisies, but other girls are welcome to hop on and watch as well. Uh, we are going to be working on the Daisy Outdoor Art Maker badge and uh, do some fun things with that. Hi, Jocelyn. Good to see you. Uh, and while we're waiting for some folks to introduce themselves, I'll go ahead and uh, say my name. So my name is Marissa. Uh, I work for Girl Scouts of Western Ohio, and I work out of the Cincinnati office. Um, and I am the program and partnerships team leader for the Cincinnati office. So Pink is your favorite color found in nature. Oh, wonderful. So yeah, think of all the different colors. Let me know uh, like if you love the blue sky or the green grass or your favorite color flower or the yellow sun. Um, I personally love the colors that can be found at sunset. I love the different oranges and yellows and pinks and purples that come out from there. Oh, Caitlin, so glad that your daughter's watching. That's awesome. So great. So it looks like some people are hopping on. So as a reminder, um, please go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, say where you're tuning in from. Um, and yes, this video will be recorded and posted in the Girl Scouts of Western Ohio library uh, after today. So, um, so I'll just go ahead and overview what we're gonna be working on today. So as mentioned earlier, uh, we are going to be working on the Daisy Outdoor Art Maker badge. I am going to help girls earn steps one and two on the badge today. Uh, and then I'll give you a tip for um, how you can earn step three on your own. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of scroll through the comments here. Hi, Maggie. Your favorite color that you found um, in nature is yellow. I'm actually going to be showing you some yellow flowers that are growing in my backyard right now. So I'll be doing something with that. <laughs> Diane loves all the colors. I'm right there with you, Diane. Uh, hi, Jessica from Florida. That's so exciting. We always love to see everyone who's tuning in from across the country and the U.S. to join us. Um, and also internationally, we had someone from India on a Facebook Live last week, which was so cool. Um, hi, Angel from Texas. This is great. All right, well, it's 10.05, so I figure I'll go ahead and get started. So uh, today we are going to be working on the Daisy Outdoor Art Maker badge. And as you can see, I'm outside. It's a little chilly, so I've got my uh, sweater on here. So the goal of this badge today is that you'll be able to look around and notice art in nature and then make your own outdoor art. So we're going to be doing a little bit of that today. Uh, and I'm, as mentioned, I'm going to be doing steps one and two. So for step one, we're going to be exploring the colors found in nature. And I know a lot of you are still uh, commenting what the favorite colors that you have um, that you can find in nature now. So uh, I'll be showing you just some of the natural colors that are popping up in my backyard uh, here in a minute. Uh, and then we're going to hear the sounds of nature by making our very own maracas using household items. So I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, it looks like we've got someone hopping on from Puerto Rico. Good to see you, Raquel. Um, and then for step three, it's to share your outdoor art. So you can certainly share some of the creations that you're going to make today. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to complete step three, but I can't wait to hear all of the amazing things that you will come up with. Um, so for step one, I thought it would be really fun to teach you all how to make your own pressed flowers. Uh, this is something that I actually learned when I was really young. I used to go to an all girls overnight camp in North Carolina and my grandmother who loved to garden uh, would write me letters and she would send me pressed flowers in the mail. Uh, and I, when I was young and going to overnight camp, I was nine and I'd get really homesick and I would open up these letters from my grandma and these beautiful dried pressed flowers um, would come out and it made me feel really connected to uh, my family. So that's always been something uh, really special to me. 
Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, kind of what the process looks like. I actually went ahead and pre-dried some flowers uh, last week. Um, and so I'll kind of show you what the finished product looks like. And then uh, I'll show you how you can go ahead and do this today. And I know there were a couple of folks who were maybe concerned that flowers may not be popping up in your area yet. No worries. You can kind of take what I'm showing you today and then uh, try it when, when spring's happening. So um, it's a skill that you can use in the future. So what you need uh, to make press flowers, a couple of different items, obviously, uh, you need flowers. Now, um, I definitely am drawn to really big poofy flowers, um, but I will say from my experience, you'll have better results if you actually work with smaller flowers um, because there's less liquid in them. Um, so just keep that in mind. I tried to do a magnolia um, flower the other day, those big, beautiful pink blooms. And uh, it's going to take a really long time to dry that bad boy out because there's a lot of uh, liquid in there. So um, I'm actually just going with a lot of the little wildflowers that are popping up in my yard. Um, and those are coming out really beautiful. So you'll need um, some fresh flowers. And again, my recommendation is to go small. And then uh, you'll need a large book to, to press it. Now, there are other ways that you can press flowers. You can use an iron, um, but I'm going to show you the most basic way because that's what I like to do. <laughs> Less supplies. So um, now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. With When you're going with a big book, um, I do recommend two things. So either use a book that you don't necessarily care about as much because the color from the petals can bleed onto the pages. And so if you really care about your book, you, you don't want um, that to happen on your pages. Or what you can do is um, you can actually grab a couple pieces of paper, just like printer paper or notebook paper, and sandwich your flowers between the paper. Uh, and then you can put it in your favorite book so that it won't bleed on the pages. So um, I did go ahead and pre-press some flowers. And so um, just a rule of thumb, I always just put them on page 100, so 100, 200, 300, so I just remember where they are. Um, so I went ahead and did these last week. I, I took a little walk um, to the park and I just picked some flowers that were popping up. Really beautiful. Um, they're flat. You can see different colors. So these are green and white. Um, and I just love how they look like a little fan. Um, so I, you can see here, I, I pressed um, about six on a page. Um, you want to make sure that they're not overlapping because then they'll stick together. But and if you want them to stick together, then um, that works great. So these are these really beautiful little white blooms. Um, I'm really excited about these. So these were from a bush in my front yard. Uh, these are still wet. Again, these are a little bit of a bigger flower, so they're going to take more than a week to dry out. I bet these will be dry um, in three weeks, and I actually just switched pages. So they were tucked on page 400, and I just moved them to page 450 um, because those pages were moist. Um, but these are so pretty. They're pink and purple blooms, um, and they're clustered. It kind of looks like a miniature snapdragon. Um, I'm really excited about how these are turning out. So um, again, these are going to need some more time to dry because they're really moist still. Um, so those were a few that I put in this book. And then I figured I'd show you um, a few others. And these are going to be the ones I'm actually demoing today because this is what's in my yard. So let me refind where I tucked these. Oh, I think I was on page 200 actually with this book. Okay, yeah. So you can see I tucked these really pretty pink and purple flowers in here. Um, they were actually more purple last week, but they've kind of turned a little bit lighter pink. Really pretty. Um, they don't need to look perfect, you know. Some you can leave with the longer stems. You can peel the leaves off. It's really whatever you like. Um, so I did these purple ones, and then I also did these kind of a multicolored press. So here we've got these yellow ones. These are what I'm going to be showing because they're what's in my yard. Um, really pretty. Um, they become so thin, it's almost like tissue paper. They're so fragile. Um, Chelsea asks, yes, yeah, so they do, they will stain the books. So as I mentioned, I'm using, the books I'm showing um, are pretty, uh, these are not really important to me. So I, I went ahead and put them in this book. Um, I am going to show you a, a demo today and I am going to put them between two pieces of paper because I'm, I've used all of my books that I don't care about as much 
And so I thought it would be kind of fun uh, to share with you one of my favorite books, a little more advanced for daisies, but you can look forward to reading it when you're older. But I'm going to press flowers in one of my favorite Harry Potter books. Um, and because I love this book so much, I'm definitely going to be putting my flowers between pieces of paper because I don't want the pages of my beloved Harry Potter book to get damaged. So um, this is for step one. So we're going to look at the colors of nature. Um, so I'm going to just turn this around and it's going to be a little bit backlit, just warning you. Um, but you can see it in my backyard. Um, I've got tons of these beautiful little yellow flowers. Uh, so I'm going to go and just pick up a few. All right, so I went and picked some of these really fun little yellow wildflowers, and this is what I'm gonna show you how to press today. Um, now, these are a little wet. There's some morning dew on them, which um, is nice because they're gonna be really perky when I press them, um, but they are gonna need to um, dry out because they are a little wet. So these might take a little bit longer, but I will say for, for the flowers about this size, they dry out pretty much within a week. So that's something to look forward to. Oh, and Sarah Kelly commented, when we aren't stay-at-home orders, grocery stores normally have cheaper bundles that you can purchase and press if flowers aren't in bloom yet. And that's a great suggestion. Um, and that's why I'm just kind of working off of what I have in my backyard. So, um, oh, I'm so excited that Leah from Pennsylvania is excited. This is one of my favorite things to do. I, I love nature and I love flowers and it's kind of fun um, to get to press flowers and create a little memory. I'm particularly excited. So this is my first year living in the house that we bought. So I might frame these as like a little um, memory box from our first spring in our new home. Um, okay, so I've got my, my thick book. Really important to have a nice thick book, a couple hundred pages. Telephone book would be great if you're not planning to use that. Uh, and as mentioned, I always forget what pages I put these on. So I typically like to do it on um, an even number like 100. So I'm going to go to page 400 because I'll be able to remember that. Okay, so I've got it open to page 400 and then I've got my blank piece of paper and I'm going to stick that right in the spine and fold it down like that. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want the color of the flower uh, to bleed onto the page. So I've got my flower here and I'm pressing down and it really doesn't matter how you lay them out because it's going to be beautiful no matter what you can put some upside down you can put some side to side again if you don't want them to stick together make sure they're not touching or leave a, a little bit of space between them um because they will end up sticking together when the liquid comes out so i think that looks good i've got all of them fitting on the page and then i'm going to go ahead and stick this other piece of paper tuck it into the other part of the spine I'm going to push it down in there to make sure we're nice and secure. And then it's as simple as this. You literally just smush and it's in there. And then press down. And then my recommendation to you all is to take some other heavier books, stack them on top, and then just leave it for about a week. So I'm going to set these to the side. I'll bring them inside. Um, and then I'll let them sit there. And it's kind of like a fun surprise. Check on it in a week. And then you can see what happens. So that's step one. Uh, see the colors of nature. So we're making pressed flowers and uh, oh, hello from Connecticut. Good to see you. Uh, so something that I am planning to do with my flowers again, so I mentioned I might make like a little shadow box, a little memory box that I can put uh, on the wall uh, as a little memory from the first spring in our home. But something else that I'm going to do. So with everything uh, that's happening right now, uh, people can use some encouraging letters. So I thought it would be really nice to write letters to my grandparents. So I've got two sets of grandparents and they all live uh, in senior homes. And right now they're just not allowed to leave their apartment buildings because they want everyone to stay inside and be safe. So I'm gonna uh, write some letters this afternoon uh, to my grandparents. I'm gonna tuck some of the dried flowers in there because they aren't able to go outside. I want them to get 
a little taste of spring. So, and I want them to know that I'm thinking about them and sending them some love. So I would love to hear uh, if you are planning to press flowers, what you're gonna do with them. There's so many fun projects you can do, so many fun crafts. Um, maybe you wanna share them again with someone like what I'm doing, but drop it in the comments. Let us know what you're gonna do with your press flowers. Would love to see. So for step two, uh, hear the sounds of nature. So I'm actually outside right now and I can hear the birds twittering and uh, it's really nice and peaceful out here today. Uh, but so for step two in the Daisy Badge, uh, girls have the option to make their own maraca um, using household items. So I'm gonna show you a super easy way that you can make your own maraca um, just with things that I had lying around the house. Um, so we had this just empty Powerade bottle. Uh, and then I bought these a really long time ago. They're dried lima beans. If you have a recipe for dried lima beans, please let me know. I don't know what to do with these bad boys. I thought it'd be, I got on a kick of buying dried beans and I just really don't know what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, yeah, so I've got my dried beans and I've got my Powerade bottle. And just to make it easy, I'm going to just cut the corner of my lima bean bag so I don't spill because... I'm a huge spiller and I would likely do that all over the place. And then now if you're doing this at home, maybe do this over the sink or <laughs> over the garbage, but I am outside, so I'm not super worried if I spill. And then I'm just gonna pour these in here. Now you don't wanna fill it all the way. I might stop right here and see what this sounds like. So I kept my lid, remember? So I'm just gonna That's kind of nice. I kind of want to see what it sounds like if I fill it just a little bit more. Do you guys want to hear what it sounds like if I fill it a little bit more? This is what it sounds like now. Sounds pretty nice. I'm going to fill it a little bit more for fun. All right. Now I've filled it about halfway. Ooh, it's a different sound now. That's nice. So you can definitely make your own maraca at home and, and take this outside and dance with it. Again, I use dried beans, but if you if you don't want to waste beans or if you don't have dried beans at home, uh, I definitely, you could pick up stones in your backyard and use stones or be creative. I would love to hear uh, what other things you can put in your maraca. And the fun thing is, and I'm not necessarily going to decorate this whole thing now, but the suggestion um, would be to wrap your maraca in tape. And of course, I've got one of these rolls of tape that's just totally it. Uh, kind of peeled at different places. It's like when the tape gets too old. Um, but you can wrap your maraca in tape and then decorate it. Now, you don't have to do it this way. This is just what's suggested. And as you can see, I'm having issues, so I might not even show you. But imagine wrapping your maraca in tape and then you can decorate it with markers or painted or I'm sure you could come up with something super super creative maybe you wrap it in string um maybe you like it in its organic form and you just want to leave it as is but what you can do is you can take your maraca outside create your own song create your own dance create your own rhythm um and just really listen for the nature um natural music and, and sounds outside in your backyard uh, maybe you're listening to the birds and you want to create a rhythm with your maraca that kind of goes along with the sound of the birds. So that would be first step two is to create your own maraca. And this is a super easy way to do that. So for step one, we saw the colors of nature. We created our own pressed flowers and learned how to do that. And for step two, I showed you how to create sound and music in nature uh, using um, just a plastic empty bottle and dried beans. Again, I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for those lima bean recipes, people. Oh, that's a great suggestion. Leslie wrote, we use dog food. That's brilliant. I don't have a dog, but I have two cats, so I definitely could have used cat food for that or even cat litter. I have a lot of extra cat litter at my house right now. I'm hoarding. Uh, so that could definitely be an option. That's really creative. Uh, and then someone wrote that they're going to use the pressed flowers to make ornaments for Christmas. I love that idea. That's really awesome. And someone else is going to mail them to their grandma too. We're on the same page, people. Uh, so then for step three, step three is simply to share your outdoor art. So maybe uh, you're going to share those pressed flowers with someone. Maybe you want to create your own song. 
uh, and share that with someone in your family to lift their spirits. But I would love to hear if you've got other ideas on how you can share the art that you make, even if it's not something that we talked about today. Uh, drop them in the comments, share it in the event discussion. Would love to see uh, what you're doing. And that's what I've got for you today. So if you are not a Girl Scout and you enjoyed this video, uh, please visit girlscouts.org slash join to learn more about becoming a member. And we are offering these virtual program opportunities every day at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on the Girl Scouts of Western Ohio public page. So if you enjoyed hanging out with me today, uh, you can tune back in at 2 p.m. today for the Brownie Home Scientist Badge with Becky Sarantu. Uh, and then I just would love to see what you're creating out there. So post in the event discussion, show us what you're up to, uh, help us stay inspired. So uh, we hope you had fun today with the Daisy Art Maker badge and uh, I'll see you all soon. So peace out Girl Scout.